next speaker uh, is a graduate of JJ College in Mumbai and uh, the University of Illinois at Urbana-Champaign. She is an architect, a furniture designer, writer, and a teacher. Uh, she has started her eponymously named practice out of Mumbai uh, and she also produces a periodic journal that deliberates on design and architecture in India. Uh, recently, she start, she has launched her furniture design company called The Big Piano. Please help me welcome Samira Rathor. Hello. Yeah, the reason being I'm, I'm so short that you, you won't see me and I won't see you. Uh, so this is usually a problem with all us five-footers. Um, the title of today's uh, presentation, The Unbearable Likeness of Being, has a story behind it. Um, and, but, but before I get into the lecture, I, 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 want to, I want to really thank from the bottom of my heart for um, Abhinav having me here. Uh, Sudipto and Madhav for putting up such a wonderful curatorial exhibition uh, and uh, Mr. Vaklu, I am, I am really uh, honored. Thank you very much. This structure is absolutely fantastic. It's been a lovely experience these last three days. Um, so coming back to this, um, the unbearable lightness of being. Jaswinder is in charge of talking to all of us people here and kept calling about what is the title of this presentation. And I was at the airport in uh, Jaipur. My flight was delayed. And I was reading the book uh, by Milan Kundera, The Unbearable Lightness of Being. And in that unbearable light moment, I wrote a mail back to him saying, OK, the title is called The Unbearable Lightness of Being. So uh, with that, uh, one didn't really know where to begin. And so it was to say, what? Unbearable lightness of being, what? And in these last two, three, uh, well, the last yesterday and the day before when we were talking uh, and going through several presentations here, uh, the word modern and modernism has uh, come up very often. And so perhaps it's something that we're all dealing with as architects, uh, the idea of modernism. Uh, and so one looked, looked up the word modernism and modernist architecture, and we found this on Dizim uh, that is looking at some of the 10 uh, best buildings in Tel Aviv uh, of modernist Bahav residential architecture. And this is very common even in Mumbai and pretty much uh, in many of the cities that have traveled that uh, modernist architecture almost as if uh, uh, is meant to deplete uh, the architecture or remove it of all its uh, embellishments, but at, at the same time somehow leaving it uh, almost as a subtractive uh, piece of architecture, uh, listless very often. And this is what we get to see very much in Mumbai, uh, the way it is growing. Um, and so whilst uh, you know, we are uh, dealing with this whole idea of stripping our architecture of unnecessary embellishments. What we're also uh, forgetting is, and like Sudipto rightly explained in his uh, presentation earlier on today, is composition. And I think one of the key things in uh, modern modernism and modernist architecture has been uh, to be able to deal with the idea of composition. And uh, this, of course, is the uh, uh, plan of Rosham uh, by the uh, popular who else but Corbusier. Uh, Corbusier also has been a figure almost, uh, you know, present in everybody's presentations, almost everybody's. And so clearly this seems to be uh, something that we are still uh, holding, uh, uh, you know, the legacy of. And uh, to my mind, he is truly the genius of composition and has really been able to look at architecture in, uh, in its pure form as art and uh, architecture. So um, today's uh, presentation, I'm dealing with four ideas um, of process, of relationships, of incompletion, and lastly, uh, the, the light itself. Um, the studio, our studio, uh, we work very closely with the idea, uh, with photography. And uh, photography itself has been a huge inspiration um, uh, for the office. 
Corbusier himself uh, used uh, photography uh, by uh, by constantly drawing pictures and uh, redrawing pictures uh, uh, over the photographs that he would see. Uh, even he's even known to have drawn uh, buildings even after they were they were built from the various photographs, and that kind of kept him uh, engaged with with the idea of space itself. Um, so the process and continuation, even in the office, is looking at um, whilst buildings are being photographed, uh, which is what all of us architects do, but then how do we actually uh, use photographs to create inspiration for architecture? And uh, with this, I want to present uh, a glimpse of this project that we are presently working on. Uh, it's a small town outside of Baroda. Uh, called Bhadran. And Bhadran is a town of very, very beautiful buildings, but it's completely abandoned. Uh, it's empty. And uh, it used to be owned by, um, uh, well, it used to be inhabited by uh, many of the rich um, Patels who have fled abroad, usually mostly to USA, uh, in the pursuit of wealth and leaving behind uh, their old ancestral homes, which are absolutely exquisite and uh, their old, very, very old parents. Uh, strangely and ironically, it's a town that is um, surrounded by tobacco field, and the main industry is uh, producing tobacco. Um, sorry. Uh, so here it is. These are some of the beautiful buildings that are now dying in Bhadran, along with uh, it being completely empty. Uh, almost like a ghost town. And uh, we went in there to look at uh, this whole idea of the presence of absence and dealing with this proposition that if you want to remember something, if, if there has to be nostalgia, then it is important to allow it to go, to let it leave. And therefore, the absence is extremely crucial and important to uh, be able to cherish memories. And for, no, for the sake of nostalgia itself, uh, we have to allow the loss. Uh, and so how do we really look at um, buildings such as this? Uh, imagine its life. Imagine people enacting their lives within these spaces. Um, this, this, of course, is uh, what it looks like now. They have uh, tobacco-filled bags from uh, floor to ceiling. And as you walk into the town, you, you are you know, sort of suffused by the smell of tobacco itself. So really, coming back to what I was saying, is how do you uh, make the sense of the intangible nostalgia tangible? And with that question in mind, we went on photographing uh, the entire town and its different buildings and its and its and its people lost, uh, abandoned, growing old, um, and we found lots of small objects uh, in one of their houses, which was being auctioned, uh, which we uh, photographed each one of them, and these were very very old uh, pieces of things. Uh, that people would use in their houses. We found a small little telex box. We found little books, account books, lots of crockery, pins, even a 1920 edition of the National Geographic. So um, collected all of this, brought it back to Mumbai, and uh, opened up to the studio. And then the studio, kids in the studio, uh, lots of interns, uh, lots of young architects, uh, just picked things out of the trunk and sat down and made these objects. And so these are like as if souvenirs of uh, remembrance and mementos of the experience that we had. And also a way of saying that uh, this, is, this is how you sort of uh, manufacture or uh, put into production the idea of nostalgia. Uh, we then took lots of pictures um, of these little objects, made drawings of the objects after they were made. And so it was really a very intuitive and a natural process by which uh, people were just asked to creatively sort of you know, uh, enjoy themselves. And then if you look at the nollies that we made after that, uh, that included the shadows of these little objects, could well act as uh, new forms to produce perhaps inspiration towards new architecture, 
And so one of the projects that we're working uh, in the studio right now is uh, another school building in Chennai that actually uh, took a lot of the inspiration from this kind of object making. Um, uh, yet another way we looked at uh, the idea of uh, object making, inventorizing, and looking at little pieces and parts in, in, you know, in a sort of kit of parts way was we took a camera and this was an exercise that I did with uh, students uh, at the Kamla Raja School. And uh, we took a camera and, and dismantled it, completely broke it. It's an analog can camera that Helene, Helene yesterday talked about, uh, also one of the uh, very close to uh, my heart objects. And uh, I asked the students to create an inventory of all its different parts. And it's, it's made up of beautiful really small, tiny, tiny, tiny parts. And what they really came up with when they set it all up was this uh, object, which they almost called the city. And interestingly, uh, you know, it, it was this large board onto which they made little, little uh, so-called buildings out of parts of a camera. Uh, the next idea I wanted to talk about is incompletion. I think uh, 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 one of the photographers yesterday spoke about it. Uh, in and I think also the uh, Melissa uh, uh, and her husband spoke about this too, about looking at the idea of construction. And uh, these are these are uh, uh, you know uh, incomplete moments because he, these are the kind of the space in between that you enjoy before a building uh, is completed and from the time that it is conceived. And so um, these are moments that are lost because once your building is made you don't ever see them again. And so um, here are some construction compositions, moments that are lost forever uh, uh, from the work. And again, to reinforce that idea, I'm using a, a little uh, story from uh, Corbusier's work and uh, Lucien Hervé, uh, who actually did a lot of uh, construction images uh, for Corbusier that has turned into a book and that inspired us to start documenting our uh, construction images also. And so this, interestingly, is um, just very large footings um, of a house, which is completely cantilevered because of the context and the kind of brief that we had to deal with. And so it, it was one of the very strong idea that uh, this client um, sort of was worried about was termites. And his previous house was completely taken over and invaded by termites because of which they had to let the house go and rebuild. And so um, he went out and found several ways in which that can be prevented. Uh, and so one of them was to look at um, filling the entire space uh, below ground with tobacco and uh, several layers of different uh, substances, one of them that was mixed uh, as a chemical with um, the cement and on, on, on the raft that you can see. It's all white with this black Japan uh, chemical coating on, on the, the foundation uh, piles itself, uh, which I thought was a lovely moment. Here are some more images. This is a school that I spoke about on Friday, Thursday, sorry, uh, which is a school at Padran, which actually led to the project I just uh, talked about. Um, it's an entire uh, brick building uh, that uses uh, bricks all the way in, in its um, construction and pretty much in uh, still not ready but getting there so um, this was a little experiment again uh, whilst the building was being made and was in construction we got really excited about the spaces that we knew we were going to lose once the false ceilings came in, once uh, the entire uh, cladding on the wall started coming in. For insulation's sake, it was a factory. And uh, so we really went in there and started shooting with objects placed uh, within its space itself to sort of make this uh, memorable moment. 
because this space is never going to come back now. This is part of uh, one of the construction details, which is also uh, consumed now. It doesn't look like this anymore because it's, it's wrapped up in steel. A wall in pigmented concrete. Um, coming to the third part is about relationships. The unbearable lightness of being in a relationship with objects. And uh, very interestingly, um, I found and read this book called The House of Poor Mr. Biswas by V.S. Naipaul. And this is a story about um, Mr. Biswas, who is never happy with the house he's in. And he's in his con con continuous search for the right house for himself, which he finds pretty much at the end of his life. And, uh, and then he sort of uh, gives way to life there itself. But the, the, the book is full of wonderful uh, anecdotes and stories and pretty much talks about how he develops relationships with the objects that he uses and how we uh, develop this kind of sense of uh, which we, we get habituated by what we live with in our everyday lives. And so this led, um, led to this idea about uh, having a relationship with, with objects. And so uh, one of the spade issues that um, Madhav mentioned earlier that we've been uh, you know, publishing, uh, this one was called um, spade uh, and uh, collage. And this one here is a house of uh, Rashmi and Deepak Divan, who uh, live in a small 600 square feet uh, apartment in Mumbai. And it is filled with objects to the extent that there is no, really no room to uh, sort of walk around and be sitting in, but this is their museum of, of, of collection of little objects um, across time. And with that, looking at Corbusier again, of how we really tend to use our spaces with the body, with uh, objects, with, with uh, experiencing space in a very sensorial manner. And yet, uh, we as architects, tend to photograph or like to have our photographs with, with really nobody in it. And so with that, um, I want to share this project, My Lakshmi. It is our home. I call it uh, My Lakshmi because of my daughter, who likes to call it My Lakshmi. And Priya is right here uh, in the audience. Priya, this is, to, this is for you. Uh, this is when she was nine years old. And uh, uh, so we went out and shot the home with little glimpses of uh, all of us in it. This is shot by Pankaj Anand, who's uh, been one of my favorite photographers. He's a young fellow who started his career with Spade. And it is shot on the iPhone. So and that's our dog, Renzo. Uh, he got his name from Renzo Piano, he's my favorite architect. And with that, uh, this love for making objects, uh, which is with which we started a company called The Big Piano that basically deals with the making of furniture. And uh, coming to then the last part of my presentation, which is talking about the unbearable lightness of light itself. So meaning to say that we do uh, a lot of our work invests in the idea of light. And I think this is a very done very, very consciously with the making of very small models uh, on uh, in, the, in the studio, a series of models uh, that go uh, on into making more detailed models of parts of the building and then actually get into making mock-ups and then um, into the building itself. Um, so here's just uh, a set of pictures that uh, showcase or give you a glimpse of the kind of work that we are engaged with.
this is the factory I mentioned earlier. Uh, now fully ready and finished. And it's an experiment I call black and white in color because the only two colors that we've used in this uh, uh, project is black and white. This is another uh, office. So really the unbearable lightness of being after copies here. Thank you. <laughs>